Hello and welcome to the Daily Meal for Wednesday the 3rd of November 2021. In today's Millwall News, we have this story from the South London Press, uh, londonnewsonline.co.uk. And they say, five takeaways from Millwall's 1-0 win over Reading. Lenny meriting right wing back starts and shape shifting works. Benikafobi's 75 minute strike was enough to send Mill into 8th spot in the championship following Tuesday night's 1 0 win over Reading. Once again, the Lions are only outside of the top 6 on goal difference. They may have even done something about that on another night after spurning a host of chances. Mill were booed off at the break but turned in an excellent second half performance to overthrow the Royals. Here are Daniel Marsh's takeaways. Shapeshifters. The way that Gary Rower has set the lines up has sparked a debate amongst the fan base this season. There have been some murmurings of discontent over the Lions' five man defensive unit following the lack of goals towards the end of last term and the beginning of this one. Mill lined up in a different 4 3 3 shape and started the game brightly before seemingly stepping off the visitors and letting them dictate things on the ball. Reading didn't actually create much, Bartos Biakowski didn't have a save to make all night, but the, the Lions were still booed off at the break after failing to, to muster much themselves. Um, Rowe introduced Scott Malone and Mason Bennett at the break with Mill reverting back to the 5 2 3 setup that they've used more often than not this term. That tactical tweak made all the difference, the host putting in a much improved display after being booed off at the break. Um, yeah, you've said that twice. Um, while there hasn't always been a flurry of goal action at the den this season, Mill had a host of decent chances against Reading, both before and after a Phobie's goal, which they didn't take. The sec second half performance in a shape that has caused grumbles among the fan base has definitely set a standard for the remainder of the season, and there's no reason that the Lions can't continue to impose themselves on games in that shape. It's not. Listen, it's not about the formation, it's about attacking. It's about attacking. Whether you play five at the back or four at the back, there's a way that Millwall was supposed to play at home. And that's attacking. Constant attacking. Wave after wave, even if it's end-to-end -end like a basketball match. We don't give a shit. And if that's not happening, if you're just letting the other stand in off the other team, letting them play, letting them play all the way into our half, not doing anything about it and then stealing the ball realizing that no one's up front because everyone's had to come back because you're letting the other team just play around and come forward and bring pressure on us and then you just hoof it forward to the striker who's on his own and then if he does manage to get the ball there's no one there with him yeah we don't we don't like that well what a fucking surprise we don't like that We want to go down the wings and we want to attack quickly, directly, straight at you. That's what we want. So it's not about the formation, it's about how you play. And people are saying, because you, cause you've got the extra defender there, that means you've got one less person in the middle or up front. Which they're blaming for why we're not attacking. Or why when you do bomb it forward, that the person up front's isolated and he can't do anything. And then the ball just comes straight back anyway. Uh, return of the Ryans. The battle for the right wing back spot has been a topic of debate for Lion fans over recent weeks. With Danny back McNamara mid from the last couple of squads. Ryan Leonard has seemingly nudged ahead of the academy graduate in the pecking order. Although Leonard may not quite offer the same dynamism that McNamara does at times in that spot, it's hard to argue against his attacking output. He grabbed his second assist of the season from his new wingback role after teeing up a phobie for the Lions goal and went close to grabbing a goal himself on numerous occasions. Leonard was in the thick of the action throughout and lined up neatly with Jed Wallace on the right hand side as Rowett side chipped away at a weary Reading defence in the second half. As impressive as McNamara has been since breaking into the Millwall team, he appears to have been dislodged by Leonard on merit alone just now. It's hard to argue against Leonard's in inclusion in any spot, with the club record signing beginning to look like an early season shoe in for the Lions Player of the Year award. Well, I want to know about that. He has been um, seemingly like a, a different player in the last month. I don't know what the hell happened. Is his contract running out at the end of the season? Um, 
is he playing for a new contract or playing for for contract somewhere else because he can start uh, discussions from january from january the first he can start speaking to other clubs about a new contract in july so if his contract is up at the end of the season i don't know if it is but it may work very well be um so that may be the situation there um yeah a lot a lot of fan, um people are not happy about magmara but leonard's playing fantastic what can you do? What can you do when when you put Leonard in there and he plays amazing? Not only that, that brings us to the first uh, point that this guy made here. Shapeshifters. Leonard can play in mid, the midfield as well. So if we do change formation, you can push him in the up into midfield. Move Ballard over if he's playing to right, uh, right move up. Maybe even Hutchinson down there. Um... And just uh, you can change the shape with uh, Ryan Leonard there. Ryan Leonard was amazing in, in yesterday's game. He really was. Um, officials assist. Gavin Ward was very much a pantomime villain at the den on Tuesday night with a number of baffling calls, hurting the Lions faithful uh, and the Lions bench. His insistence on turning a blind eye to Luke Southwood's but persistent time wasting didn't particularly endear Ward to the Millwall fans. But Ward's weird decisions actually sparked the Den crowd to life in midweek. Although there were just north of 10,000 Millwall fans, uh, Tuesday's atmosphere in the second half was up there as one of the best so far this season. And that atmosphere helped spur the Lions on to deliver what's probably the best 45 minutes of football they played all season. Um. So maybe there won't be actually too many complaints on the officials. If anything, they can probably be credited with the assist for Tuesday's uh, win. Um, yeah, but it's a symbiotic relationship. When you attack, we the crowd get excited and start cheering and going crazy. So the more you do that, the more the crowd's going to pipe up. So you need to do it time and time and time again. And the crowd, crowd will be. The more direct you are, the crowd is going to get on it. That's that's how it goes. It's symbiotic. Uh, halting some hoodoos. <clears throat> Mill finally recorded back-to-back -back home wins in the league this season, thanks to their slender triumph over the Royals. It's hard to argue with how uh, how impressive their form on the road has been since Raul took charge. But he himself has admitted that his side have stalled a little when it comes to performing in SC16. That wasn't a problem on Tuesday night as his side moves up a gear following a poor first half. It feels like it's just Millwall's home form that's holding him back from crashing the end of season promotion lottery in May. It's now 15 points from a possible 21 for the Lions following 5 wins from the past 7 games. That's promotion form but they'll need to keep performing at a den if they are to sustain those types of of returns. Saturday's clash with Derby who are in turmoil both on and off the pitch represents a golden opportunity for Routside to experience some home comforts and as an added bonus it's likely that a third consecutive home win would see the Lions heading into the international break sitting comfortably inside the top six. Um, now here's the thing the Derby may be at the foot of the table but that is because of a points deduction. Do not be fooled by looking at the table, which we will look, be looking at at the end of this video. In terms of points they've actually won on the pitch, they've got like 17 points. That would see them bottom mid-table. They're not, they're, not, they're not garbage team. They're in the garbage zone because of the points deduction. So don't, worry, don't, uh, don't be fooled by that, Millwall. They are... Uh, they're not the best team, they're a decent team. But don't be fooled by that thinking they're dog shit because they're at the foot of the table. Forward thinking. A Phoebe's third goal of the season and has the scope to give Rowett a selection headache. Tom Bradshaw was left on the bench just a couple of weeks after his brace down Stoke at the den and a Phoebe's winning strike could see Bradshaw forced to settle for a spot on the sidelines again on Saturday. Although it's hard to argue that any of Millwall's strikers have been particularly prolific this uh, term, there are promising signs that their attackers are starting to find some form. Millwall's last three goals have all been fired from inside the six-yard box, a feat that hasn't been a regular occurrence for strikers at the den over the past few years. 
To add to a phobia and Bradshaw were discovering their goal scoring touch in recent weeks, the introduction of Mason Bennett should also give Rowett food for thought. Ahead of Mills' clash with Derby on Saturday, Bennett's introduction at the break completely changed the trajectory of the game and he'll be chomping at a bit to start uh, the game against his whole club. Rowett has been robbed of being able to select Bennett for the majority of the season, but he now has the luxury of, of having three forwards who all seem to be on the brink of a turnaround in form. Yeah, Mason Bennett was um, very good uh, when he came on. He's he can hold the ball up. He's got pace. He's got power. Um, very very good player, Mason Bennett when he's when he is fit. And that's the thing. He's just thing is he just can't keep himself fit, which is a shame. Um. So. More post-match comments from Adam Barrett, who did the interviews after the game. Uh, we missed the fans during the pandemic. Millwall assistant boss reckons Den crowd were a big help. 1-0 win over Reading. Adam Barrett felt the atmosphere inside the Den on Tuesday night helped inspire Millwall to their 1-0 win over Reading. Benek Fobi struck in the final third of the match to clinch the points for the Lions who are just outside the playoff spots on goal difference alone. Millwall were booed off by the fans after the poor first half performance, but the Lions were reinvigorated after the break, spurred on by a raucous atmosphere that was jointly instigated by some questionable refereeing decision for Gavin Ward and some much improved attacking impetus. But we know at home this can be a really tough place to come, said Barrett. We miss not having the support was here through COVID. They make it a hostile atmosphere. And to get back-to-back -back wins at home and get that energy back, I think the second half there was a fantastic atmosphere in the place and you could really sense it. So we want to build on that and continue that it will run. But we've got to make sure that we're right for Saturday because if you're not, then we don't pick up the points in this, this division. After garnering a reputation as the division's draw specialist, Millwall have now gone seven games without a draw in the league. And Barrett admitted that there was an element of relief that the Lions had managed to find that little bit of quality to turn those results into wins over the past month or so. We know we've drawn a lot and that's frustrating, had the Lions as assistant boss. We've done a lot of work and we've spoken about it an awful lot and worked on the training pitch. We've been a real hard team to beat, a very difficult championship side to come up against. It's just turning those key moments in games with a little bit of quality that can turn draws into wins. Thankfully, over the recent period, we managed to do that, and it's so important. But I think the pleasing thing is that we're always in games. It's very rarely that we're out of a game. It's just nice over the last month or so that we're turning those draws into wins, which is a lot more pleasing. Indeed, indeed. Well, well said, Adam, well said. Um, so, something else that happened in the game or didn't happen was Danny Ballard. He didn't happen because he missed the game. Um, so, what happened there? What happened there? Um, another injury? Oh, dear. This is from news at den.co.uk. Daniel Ballard missed his first league game, but Millwall system boss hopeful is available to face Derby. Millwall are hoping that Daniel Ballard will be available to face Derby County in their last game before the international break this Saturday. Ballard missed the 1-0 win over Reading on Tuesday night, but was at the den for the game. It was the first time he wasn't in a starting lineup in the league this season after his summer loan move from Arsenal. He has made 21 appearances already in this campaign, including four World Cup qualifiers for Northern Ireland. Mill assistant boss Adam Barrett said, Hopefully he won't be too long. Dan's been excellent for us. He's come in and played a hell of a lot of football in a short space of time. He's a young lad, but he's been outstanding for us. He goes away for international duty and he's playing for them as well. It's been a really busy period for him with games coming thick and fast. Hopefully he won't be too long. Uh, what? So they didn't really say anything. Is he injured? They're just resting him. What's happening in this? Hopefully he won't be too long. Hopefully he won't be too long. What? Is he injured? They didn't really say anything. Just hopefully he won't be too long. That doesn't really say anything. So they're resting him, it seems, because he's been playing too many games. Because when... When the rest of the players have a break during the international game, he's actually he plays two games during the international game. And the other players play zero. So, um, and so, is Rowett saying that that's he's looking tired at the end of the games, or is he's blaming him for other things, or, or what's happening there, or is he just 
seeing it is that he looks a bit tired and giving him a break. It's all very weird, isn't it? All very weird. Hmm. Okay. But that does. But this story doesn't really say anything. And this, the quote from Adam Barrett doesn't say anything as well. This is hopefully it won't be too long. Did he break down exhausted after training one time? It's all very weird, all very weird. Okay, but now here's the thing. We also had other news come out about Danny Ballard today. Um, news from the other side of the river. Arsenal. This is from a website called courtoffside.com, but it's around other websites as well. Arsenal takes step to avoid losing promising youngster on a free transfer. Maybe Arsenal stepped in and said uh, he's playing too many games because he plays international. Maybe. Maybe. Do you think they, they could have done that? Maybe. Now, in terms of Gary Rout and Millwall Football Club trying to get a relationship with Arsenal so they can get more youngsters from them on loan, I'd imagine they would. If Arsenal say, uh, our young man is playing too many games because he plays two times during the international break, do you mind... Uh, Give me a little bit of rest, please. I'm sure Gary Ratt right and Mill will say, Oh, yes, certainly, Arsenal. We will do that. Um, I can imagine. Uh, Arsenal are reportedly set to trigger an option to extend the contract of promising youngster Daniel Ballard, who is currently on loan at Millwall. The 20 year old defender looks like he has a bright future in the game after rising up through Arsenal's academy, but there remains plenty of competition for first team place at the Emirates Stadium. Still, it looks like Arsenal are set to do their bit to keep Ballard at the club beyond this season as he nears the end of his contract, according to Football.London. So they were the ones who broke it, I imagine. Gunners fans will no doubt hope Ballard can come back to North London and have a role to play following the likes of Bukaya Saka. And Emil Smith row into the senior side after rising through the ranks at the club. Arsenal youth coach Ken Gillard recently singled out Ballard as a player to watch when he spoke exclusive when he spoke exclusively to Court Offside about the club's academy and the role f uh, former player Pierre Mertesacker has played in revamping the way Arsenal bring up their young players. Danny Ballard touched wood. He's progressed fantastically well, Gillard said. His journey and his success is all down to him. He's had setbacks along the way, but he's so robust. Whether that's injuries or almost being released, he was at Blackpool last season and he had great experience in getting promoted. They wanted him back there, but there were a lot of championship clubs interested in him. So he's gone to Millwall and he's played almost every minute for them. Then along comes the international break and he's playing for the senior in National Ireland national team as well. The resilience he's shown goes back to those values a humility, discipline and respect, he has those in abundance. So that, that's an interesting quote there from him now. He's all play, He's played almost every minute for them. Then comes the international break and he plays for C, for the Ireland team as well. And don't forget, was when he went for the, was it the Northern Ireland game? He got a smack in the mouth and got a black eye. Was it a Millwall game? I can't remember. But he did that. That did happen to him. And he, he carried on playing. So maybe they've said, uh, can you give him a break, please? He's playing too much. Maybe. Um, why not? Why not? Um, if, it's, if it's the best thing for the future of Millwall-Arsenal relations and it helps us maybe get another loan player, why not? If they say rest him, let's rest him. You know? Um, we'll see how it goes. Um, do we need him against Derby? Now, they're um, they're not as bad as the table makes him look out, but I think the defence we have without Ballard should be capable against Derby County. And we'll, we'll see how it goes. So, mystery there. Ballard being rested. Maybe at the request of Arsenal, maybe not, who knows. Um, but yeah, so they're going to offer him a new contract, which is uh, fantastic, fantastic for him. I hope he gets, uh, gets, a, bit, uh, gets a pay raise and um, hopefully, hopefully next season he will be a superstar in the Premier League and good luck to him. 
good luck to whatever team is playing for it was Arsenal or another team um, fantastic player uh, fantastic lad it seems uh, good luck to him uh, moving on now to this from millfc.co.uk they're telling you about what's coming up uh, in December already uh, in November or, it's, or it's beginning of November now I, I, if you're not thinking about Christmas yet especially how fucking freezing it was yesterday did you did you go to the game were you frozen like a board it was so so cold down there the northerly wind was blowing so what's happening now so this is all the stuff that's happening in uh, December that you can book in advance uh, Mill were telling you about it so Mill Christmas party night Friday 10th of December so just over a month away it's that time of the year again. The ideal way to kickstart your 2021 Christmas celebration tickets are on now on sale for the Mill Christmas Party Night. Hosted in the Exec Lounge here at the Den from 7pm until midnight, you can dance the night away with friends, family and fellow Mill supporters. For just £20 per person, enjoy a festive buffet alongside our DJ and disco playing for all the Christmas classics. Make sure you buy your tickets in advance so there will be no sales on the door in the evening of the event. For over 18s only, you can purchase your Christmas party ticket there. Um, yeah, so if you're retired and you don't have a works Christmas party anymore, and you want you want to experience that kind of thing, this is it. This is it. So it's different groups of people coming together and having a kind of separate but together Christmas party, um, which you can kind of get at different places. Uh, I think there was there's like a place in Billericay that's quite famous for it, where they have. Uh, Christmas party but it's all like different groups of Christmas parties but they come instead of just going to a pub and having a Christmas party they all they all call, sort of go together and combine into one giant mega Christmas party I suppose that's what this is like if you're self employed and you don't you don't really have work colleagues you can go to this Christmas party and have a kind of Christmas party that you would get if you were in a in a large company um, so I imagine that's that's what that's like so 7 p.m. until midnight 20 pound per person and then um, buying your drinks at the bar there so if you want to get involved in that there you go Friday the 10th of December I would imagine that's not before a game no way will that be before a game. Um, pretty sure in that. So a week later than that, we have Santa Dash, Saturday the 18th of December. So what is that about? So apparently it's the second one they're doing. So Mill Football Club's second annual to Santa Dash will take place on Saturday the 18th of December. Um, so I'm just looking it up now. So, Friday the 10th of December, we're playing away at Peterborough on the 11th. So, maybe the kind of game you might want to miss you, you, if you want to go on a Christmas party the night before. You're absolutely wasted. Or if you just want to, it finishes at midnight, maybe you stick around in the car park until 6am when the coach leaves for Peterborough. Um, so, moving on to Santa Dash. Um, why wouldn't you want to run 4k 4 kilometers dressed as Santa Claus all in the name of charity in the aid of the brilliant Mill Community Trust and in partnership with London City Runners participants will assemble at the den for a 10am start and run 4 kilometers 2 away from the stadium and 2 back adult tickets are priced at £25 which includes a blue Santa costume and junior under 16's are priced at £15 which includes an elf costume so that's to raise money I suppose that's to raise money for the Mill Community Trust um, just a, a large run with everyone dressed as Santa which were all quite fun um, and a couple of before Covid I know there were these massive groups of what would you call it? A pub crawl? Just before Christmas of thousands and hundreds of people. Like hundreds of people dressed up as Santa Claus. Like they went 
uh, London Bridge, I've, I've seen them. In West End, I've seen them. And they just cause mayhem. There's like hundreds of them. Literally freaking crazy. So I imagine that would be quite like that, but not so crazy. Um, is there a route or do you just still run off in different directions? Um, anyway, if you want to do that, that's on Saturday the 18th if you're a runner. Or you just want a bit of uh, festive fun. There you go. He also here is Christmas Junior Tour, 20th of December. So this is the week of Christmas. So the schools will be out. It's a Christmas Junior Tour. Um, get an exclusive look behind the scenes at the Lions Famous Stadium with our mask, famous mascots. As well as their little elves. Who knows, you may just find some early Christmas presents along the way. Alongside your tour of the den, there will be plenty of fun festive activities to get involved in. So don't miss out. Lasting around 90 minutes, our junior tours are the perfect way to view the parts of the stadium you don't get to see on match day. And you can even have your picture taken with your favourite player's shirt in the dressing room. Or perhaps pretend you are the manager in a dugout. Tickets cost just £5. For under 16s and £10 for adults. Now, adults must have an under 16 in your party to attend. Now, I've told you about this before. I told you about this when they listed uh, all the. Um, when they listed the. They put up a list of junior tours. I told you about this one. Can you imagine what kind of Christmas present this would be? And how cheap it is as well. £10 for, for adults, £5 for under 16s. That's a bargain. That is a bargain. Now, that's a lot better than going to that fucking Winter Wonderland rip-off shit. Spending hundreds of quid. Spend a fiver, go down a den. Or you... £10 for one adult, and then if you've got a couple of kids, £5 each for them. Go down to the den. Travelling costs, whatever that is. It's still cheaper, isn't it? And it's in Christmas week. So you can bundle it up as a like, Christmas present. That's fantastic. It really is fantastic there. Um, so if you want to get involved in any of these, uh, contact the club, get involved. Um, all the links are on this website, uh, which is uh, <coughs> millwc.co.uk. Christmas in SE16. Um, so now, there was a match to, uh, yesterday. So, you know what that means. We're going to do the post-match stats. So the rest of this video is about statistics. If you're not interested in that, Thank you for watching the news so far. Good night. God bless. Now, anyone who's staying on, we are looking at the stats. Now, for some reason, the uh, 361 experimental uh, XG over the length of the match is not up yet. I imagine the guy was waiting until the championship matches today were done. And he's probably doing them now at home in his pants on his laptop. But they're not up yet. So... What we are doing is we're going to jump into the infogold.net and look straight at that. So this is, here you can see, uh, Phoebe, 71 minutes, Millwall 1, Reading nil, And in the middle, the FT, the expected goals over the match, 1.5 for Millwall, 1.1 for Reading. So even though we huffed and we puffed, our chances were well, numerous, but not not um, fantastically productive, could you say? Yeah, that's what I just did. So, Kifton build, 31 minutes, got booked. Two of the changes at half-time, which changed the game. Uh, Matt Smith off, Mason Bennett on. Uh, a tall, uh, slow player who can jump and win many headers and a shorter stockier but absolutely amazing lightning quick mason bennett and kifton build off for scott malone a change of shape and the second half was absolutely night and day from from the first half now this happens all the time it, this is what's frustrating this happened i don't know who draws up the game plans what what they do but the way we started wasn't the best. And this happens time and time again. We often concede early in almost with the first shot of the goal. Uh, in many games, we, we concede the first opposition shot on goal. 
and the first half is just a nightmare and then we ch make changes in the second half or later on in the second half and things change and we play better and we get the draw but luckily we didn't concede in the first half against Reading because they're not going through too much of uh, they're not playing too well at the moment so that was good that push gas he's, he's yeah apparently he's a massive drought in terms of goal scoring like literally hundreds of hours of game time without scoring really bad but they still persist with him um and it just didn't work so let's have a look at the stats in terms of um the lineup the player ratings which i've said before on this uh website i'm not all that i think they're a very narrow gauge of giving out points in terms of shots on goal and sh like shots not on goal so here we go a phobie man of the match 9.05 basically because he scored and i imagine it's because he had probably one shot one or two shots on target and he got one so that's really good um in terms of not so good uh matt smith kifton bell and murray wallace leonard seven as well murray wallace uh 7.57 so there you go the subs when they come on scott malone 6.95 mason minute 6.22 danny mcnamara 5.72 but he's on a on the pitch from for about five minutes so what can you do in five minutes so let's move on to the actual numbers the stats uh what happened here so possession percentage 44 percent for millwall 56 for reading attempts on target attempts on target five to zero reading did not have a shot on target all game did they i'm trying to remember um that that swift was that on target maybe it wasn't um so attempts off target 11 to 5 so that's why we got low xg we had a lot of shots so we had 11 off target one block shot uh five on target so that's 17. so we had 17 attempts Oh, and four goalkeeper saves, so that's 21. So we had 21 attempts. But only five were on target. Um, so, in terms of block shots, one to four. Uh, it attempts off target, 11 to five. Total passes 400 to 546, 302 completed passes to 461, corners 4 to 1, offsides none for us, one for them. Uh, that's because they played quite deep, didn't they? Um, didn't really be able to get in behind them. Uh, fouls 10 to 5, yellow cards 2 to 0. That's kind of interesting. Uh, the referee there, not a big fan of his, and uh, the numbers spare it out. Uh, that he was always a bit weird when he that guy he's got a funny bubble bubble shaped head but i don't know why it's the way he's his hair is on his head he's got a bubble head gavin uh, gavin ward he's very noticeable and uh he um not the biggest fan of his when, when he referees us uh that's probably unjustified when, when you probably look at the games uh, but i just have the feeling that when we get him as a referee things ain't uh gonna go our way if you understand what i mean so have a look at the map which i love on this so i love this map but you can see there if i scroll back up look at the numerous 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 chances but not very good chances not very good chances and half of them were outside the area that's not um a lot of counter attacking people running on goal and then they're not uh passing the ball looking at you <coughs> jed passing the ball to someone else who's in a better position to put the ball on target well but that's because if you've run 30 freaking yards at the goal and you're f you've put all the effort in and you probably want to have a whack yourself and get the glory which i understand but it's a team game and we're trying to score goals so maybe slip in the other fella let him score 
and everyone will look at you as the one who run 30 yards and put the effort in and maybe next time they'll, they'll pass the ball to you and help you out um, but there you go so there of course is the goal and we have all these uh, shots that was the only one in the 6 yard box they're all pretty much of a much of a muchness there's an, there's one there that's eight percent so that that was the next biggest one they're yeah they're really poor chances I'm not really able to open them up um yeah, you go to reading they had that one chance swift so that's 58 um so but now the team was booed off in the first half so let's have a look at the first half me oh my it was it looked it was like a little bit history repeating wasn't it um not a lot going on up front we've got what have we got there billy mitchell right in long shot jed wallace early in the game benicophobi and benicophobi so there you go compare that so basically uh, we we were as bad as reading going forward they actually had a shot close to the goal but uh no cigar on our second half what happened there night and day night and day now here's the thing we attack them more we get better chances but so do they but, but we have a better defense our defense can soak it up so they actually get a, a, that, that that chance and that chance was better than the one they had in the first half throw from the same guy but it's, they, 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 don't, they don't score they they don't score but that's how it goes if you attack more, you're probably going to have to defend a bit more. But well, that's fine. So fairness rating, was that a fair result? 78.56. Not the highest of scores, but uh, I'll take that. Um, okay, so moving on now to whoscored.com. What did they say? So match summary. Millwall created a high number of chances relative to their position, stole the ball off them from the opposition, were effective at creating goal scoring opportunities from counter attacks. Weaknesses, team had no significant weaknesses. Millwall played with width, had a large quantity of possession in their opponent's half, attacked down the left hand side, had a high shot frequency when in possession, favoured crossing the ball. Indeed. Indeed, indeed. Uh, attack down the left hand side now especially in the second half what happened was Murray Wallace was playing and Scott Malone was playing as well so now with no Danny Ballard that meant Jake Cooper was in the middle and Sean Hutchinson was on the right hand side where Ballard usually plays so that meant Murray Wallace and, and uh, Scott Malone could work together going down that left hand side and it seemed to work. So attempts have yes, yeah, seventeen, which we discussed earlier. Seventeen to nine, twelve to six open play, three to two set piece, two to one current attack. So yeah. Um so the seventeen shots, uh, one goal, that's five percent. Again, not clinical, not clinical, not very good chances as well as we've seen on, on the shot map before. And here we both teams going down there the left hand side mostly. Um shot directions shot zones action zone um most mostly in the middle and up front very little in mills third which is fantastic to see um player positions you can see here but this is this is what i was saying about having a player the player in the middle dropping back so number 10 matt smith he's dropping back into the middle which stops the midfield become from becoming overrun. But when you have to play, when you're playing two up front, they both do that. So then you get a, a lot. Then it will stop our midfield being overrun. But you can see that playing four three three. Two two of the defenders on one side, two on the other. Three in the midfield bunched up to stop them from overcrowding. Because look what they did here 47 10 14. They were red and green and blue on the right hand side. Uh, 19 28 all bunched up in the middle there. Trying to overload our midfield. Because I imagine they assumed we were going to play 5 2 3. And we didn't. 
So there you go. But you've actually got Jed Wallace and uh, Phoebe playing further forward than Matt Smith. So there you go. Um, so let's go up and look at pass types just before we go. So here you go, passes. So 430 passes to 5454. But 28 crosses for Mill, 8 for them. 58 long balls to 50 or 4 long balls. So it's the crosses. And yet again, they said in that story, the 6 yard box. That's the third goal we've scored in s of our last three goals all three of them were tappings from the six yard box from crosses maybe that's a thing that should be explored can we do that more often getting crosses across the front of goal into that six yard box especially on the counter when they're like you can do that when they're like um from a set piece at a corner but the, the six yard box will be crowded on a counter when you're running at them if you can do that so run down the middle Go out wide, cross it in, and then boom, goal. Fantastic. Um, so let's move on now to uh, this graphic. So we've got Ryan Land with the assist, Benneke Fobre with the goal. Uh, if you look at the top by the club badges, you can see 6.94 player rating average for Millwall, 6.57 rating. So better than them overall, but not by much, not by much. In terms of player rating, so let's have a look here. Uh, man and match for them, Hutchinson, not a phobia. Hutchinson, 7.9, but some, a lot of Mill players, 7 and above. Hutchinson, 7.9, a phobia, 7.5, a Cooper, 7.5, um, Kifton Bell, 6.1. So, seems well, he only played 45, so he would have a low, low score because he didn't have 90 minutes to get his stats up. but Seems that the right player was taken off there. And uh, Matt Smith 6.6. .6. Indeed, so Biakowski 6.4. Apparently they didn't have a shot on target according to the other website. So we'll see if that's true. So shots now, total shots. There you go. Phobia with four, Wallace three, Mitchell with three, Leonard with two. Fantastic. Malone went to come on three. At three shots. So a lot of shots going around. And with them, just swift number five shots. That push cast, if, mate. If you ain't, no wonder you ain't scored in 140 minutes, or whatever it is, a thousand minutes. So it's, it's a lot, a long time. If you don't have a shot on goal, you ain't gonna score. Um, possession wise, in terms of individual players, um, Hutchinson and Wall uh, Murray Wallace on the ball a lot for us, um, and that Lauren for them. 8.9% of the game time. Now that was discussed by Adam Barrett after the game. In yesterday's video I talked about that. When they made the changes to get someone on Laurent. To stop him from uh, getting on the ball so much. So that seemed to have worked. I don't know if they must. Now here's the thing. If you follow the game and you're a betting man. If you bet in play. This website I believe is live. They post the stats up live. So you can see these things now. I one now. I think Gary Rout says that he has access to stats and stuff, and he watches it as the game goes on. So I imagine he gets the same type of thing. Now maybe they they saw that he was having so much time on the ball, and they thought, "Oh, we got to stop that. How do we stop that?" So they did. They made the changes, and it stopped. Um, pass success by player. Billy Mitchell, 92. Mm, that seems promising. And he played 90 minutes, so did he... That's That seems very good. Um, everyone having a good good one there for me, all except for uh, Leonard and Smith. But Leonard was being a very go-getting and adventurous, so that's not a surprise. Um, but for them, like their midfield in the 90s there, 90% accuracy there, all three of their midfield. Ours, 90 and 80. So, dribbles. Not very much, not a lot of dribbling from Millwall. Um, 12 for them, only 2 for us. Aerials, 1. Fantastic from us as well. Uh, Cooper, Hutchison, Smith. Even Mason Bennett would come on 3. Uh, not bad for 45 minutes. 
Tackles here again with the tackles by a factor of two to one. Or is it two to one? Uh, no. Well, we had 21, they had 14, so one and a half to one. Um, Mitchell six, Savile three, or Phobie three. That's what you want to see. Players up front tackling. That's what happened in the last game. When I said we won, was it was it the um the away game, Barnsley? Same thing, tackling them up up front. We had a lot more tackles than them, and we won the game. Um, so there you go. Um, corners, uh, yeah, dispossessed. Okay. Now moving on to player stats in a clear and concise fashion. So ratings wise, Sean Hutchinson seven point nine three, Cooper and Afobi seven point five four, but seven players on seven and above. Not not bad, not bad. The seven sevens, fantastic. Um, low lowly ratings. So Kifton Bell six point oh seven. Uh, now so he's definitely been beaten by the person who come on for him. I don't know which one one it was. Was it Scott Malone? Mason Bennett, but it wasn't like for like swaps. So it's not a midfielder for a central midfielder, so I doubt we can claim that. It's a different position, but still not a good game apparently from him. Um, yeah, everyone played it pretty decently apart from Kifton Bell, I think. Um, in terms of touches, who had the most touches? Hutchinson, Murray, Wallace, and then George Savile, and then Ryan Leonard. Okay, um, let's have a look at the offense. So, in terms of shots, shots on target. So, seven players having shots, five having more than one, but were they on target? So, we won one nil. How many shots were on target? Now, that's a lot better than the last game. Five shots on target there, two from the subs for Scott Malone and Mason Bennett. Not bad. Now, Phoebe, it's two. So 50% of shots were on target. Four shots, two on target, one goal. Decent. Decent. Very decent. Uh, Jed Lewis, three and one. Okay. Um, yeah. Key passes. I don't actually know what that means. Key passes. What does that actually mean though? What is a key pass? I don't know. They don't say. But uh, five from Jed Wallace, so seems like it's important. Defensively, tackles. Who led in tackles? Billy Mitchell, six. Nine players say having a tackle. Fantastic. Interceptions. Six for Hutchinson. Three for Jack Cooper. Billy Mitchell again. Nice. Uh huh. Clearances. Who led that? Jay Cooper. So Hutchinson with the tackles and Jay Cooper with the clearances. Nice. Um, block shots. There you go. And passing wise. So what did we say? We said Billy Mitchell had a higher passing and accuracy. That is off of 37, so yeah, it's still good, still good to have 37 passes and 91% accuracy, or 92 nearly. That's pretty decent. Um, looking at his long balls there, 6 and 6, fantastic. 6 long balls, 6 accurate, absolutely brilliant. So he had 100% accuracy on his long balls. So this is short, short game, let him down a little bit, I think. But not by, not, not by much. Not by much. So 8%. So what's 8% of 37? I have no idea. I'm not working that out in my head. We'll be here all night. Um, the most passes from Murray Wallace, 53. So that's still quite high for him. 53 passes, 79.3 accuracy. That's pretty decent. I imagine that's that was him going forward and sending Scott Malone away. Um, Sean Hutchinson, 50, 72. 
48 70 yeah pretty decent from everyone a Ryan Lander 39 764.1 but again you look at his long balls 12 to 4 I imagine that's him trying a few things out or just clearing it hopefully long and it just not you know, it fucks up his stats but at the time when you're playing the game it's the right thing to do um, let's look at crosses and accurate crosses so there you go Jed Wallace 13 for accurate but like I said whipping the balls into the six yard box hopefully someone gets there maybe they don't if they don't that's not going to be an accurate cross because you're playing it in space you're not playing it to a man so this kind of stat I'm not really that bothered about if we're doing things where we whip the ball into the box and a phobie runs onto it um, that kind of thing so long balls accurate long balls probably a bit more um, concerning because we like switching up play and stuff uh, that kind of thing um, so long Ryan Leonard 12 and 4 so he had, as, he had many as many long balls as Bart Biakowski had which he includes goal kicks in that and thing from offside if they had any offside up uh, Reading so he's really pumping the long balls forward Murray Wallace 11 and 7 so was that a thing they were told so they were both playing um, on the right right wing, weren't they? Uh, they were both playing fullback, weren't they? So maybe they were told get to the fullbacks and then pump it long to Matt Smith. And they were both doing that. Billy Mitchell, as we've seen, six and six. Sean Hush five and two. Jake Cooper five and four. Fantastic stuff there. Uh, okay, so there you have it. There is the. Um, match stats and bring you go back to here and just wanted to show you this so the highest rated player for reading was their goalkeeper mm, when you're when you're highest rated player for the opposition is the goalkeeper you know you're doing something right and i wanted to show you this, this is a table this is where we stand right now after wednesday's games because we played on tuesday and half the team played on wednesday half the teams in the league played on tuesday and bournemouth lost um, they lost to was it someone I don't know Fulham smashed Blackburn Rovers a seven seven nil and that team we're round or about where we are they're just one point behind us and we only lost two one but that they absolutely wiped the floor of us but you managed to get out out of that one two one don't know how but I want to show you this so we're in ninth place now didn't drop down that much after Wednesday's games. Um. Uh, yeah. Um. What, what did I want to say? Ah. Oh. So if you look up here, at the team in fourth, Coventry City, they are on twenty-seven points. Now there is a blanket of differential of six points between fourth and fifteenth. There is only six points, two wins separating fourth and fifteenth. Now, as you can see here. All of the teams have played 16 games now. What does that mean? In this league campaign, we play 46 games, 23 at home, 23 away. 46 divided into 3 is 15.33 reoccurring. So we have officially, officially played a third of the season. The first third of the season is done and dusted. And look where we are. We are in ninth place. Now that's a pretty decent position to be sitting in after a third of the season has been done. So we go into the second third of the season now. We've got Derby and the rest of this month. Derby. We've got a little bit of break. And we've got Middlesbrough. Bournemouth. Now Bournemouth just lost today. Have they are they in a wobble? Are they in a wobble? Do they not like the cold weather? Because it's a bit freezing today, wasn't it? Will it stay cold? Will it be cold on the 24th when we play the midweeks Wednesday night? Maybe it will be cold. Maybe they, they, don't, maybe they don't like it. Maybe they're the ones who wear the long sleeves and the gloves. and the, Can you wear a woolly hat? Maybe they wear a woolly hat as well. Maybe they don't like it. So that's maybe a bit advantageous to play playing Bournemouth on a Wednesday. Maybe it will. Um, then we play Hull, who really aren't very good at all. So the... 
there is a chance for us to get very much cement our place in the top half of the table in this second third of the season that's coming up over the next 15 games. It starts to get a bit tougher in January. But, but of course it does. It's uh, not an easy league. It's not an easy league. There's only six points separating about a dozen teams. So, But you've got to be pleased with where we are. Now, I might not be pleased with how, how we're getting there. Uh, how the situation has folded. All those draws at the start of the season. Struggling to score. Struggling to attack. But there doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason. It seems we set up to play a certain formation. If that doesn't work, we're either we're either one nil down, and then things get changed at half time, and we do enough to get back in the game and get a draw. That needs to stop. We need to actually figure out quickly, hopefully before the game. How we the best way to play against the teams we're playing against, and sort it out that way. Um, and hopefully, the next the next third of this season is gonna be a lot better than the first third. And hopefully, a lot more wins, a lot more goals, especially at home. And that is it for the end of this video. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.